This is code.org, and let's see what we have here. The student class has a constructor that takes a string for a name and a double for a GPA. Okay, so the constructor, here's our student class, right? And then the constructor is here. I know it's a constructor because it shares the exact same name as the class. And it, what it's saying is takes is it allows us to pass in a name and a GPA. And then using that information as the uh, with these parameters, it sets up or it defines the class values. These properties name and GPA will then be equal to whatever we gave this method. And what did they give it? Well, nothing yet. All right. Uh, instantiate a student object with user input. Cool. All right. So instantiate a scanner object called input. All right. And let's go ahead and do that. Notice, guys, let's always use our resources. Let's see. Show me how. Super helpful. So if we forgot, a scanner object is instantiated using the following syntax. Quapow. So I'm going to practice actually writing this out myself so I remember it. And I'm just going to scanner. Did they give us a name? We uh, Instantiate student object. So I'll just name it student. Oh, with user input. All right, so let's just say mm, user input. And what is this going to be equal to? And again, guys, right here, use your resources. So it's equal to new, right? Because we're creating this object. Scanner system dot in and quapow. All right. And the reason this will work is we're importing it from the utilities library of Java. And so we can utilize this for, well, input. Okay, with that being said, let's see here. Write a method called create student. Where are we doing this? In student creator, right? Not in this class itself, right? We're leaving this alone, but we have another class, student creator, that it looks like we'll utilize. Write the create student, uh, write the method create student. Ah, look at that. They already gave it to us. Okay. Prompt the user to in either to enter a name and use input next line to get their input. Cool. Okay. So if we're going to do prompt, we're going to have to print out to the council. And so that is, as we've seen before, system.out.print. I usually do print L in specify. Oh, notice they were doing it all on the same line. So that's good. That tells me what I need. And I'm just going to copy exactly what they have here. So enter the name with a semicolon, bam. And then we're going to go ahead and get the input. So string. And notice how kind they were, guys, right? They even told us, hey, to do this, you need input next line. So let's listen to them. And this, what this does is tell the computer, hey, what is input, right? Input is what is getting passed here, the scanner object. And the scanner that is going to be passed, the scanner that we are going to utilize is the thing we created over here, right? And the scanner allows us to take a peek at that next line, grab what they write, and utilize it. For this, in this example, it would be the name. All right, prompt a user to enter a GPA. Okay, so I'm seeing a similarity. So I'm actually, we're going to need more info from them. So I'm just going to take this line, copy it, go down here and paste it. And this time it will be GPA. Let's see what else we need here. And that's it. We're going to have it say other items like student. Okay, so let's go ahead, create a student object with the user's name, print out. Okay, so I'm going to print one more time here. So I'll do a control uh, V or command V on a Mac and do student. It looks like they have. Okay, this all makes sense. So I'm debating name here, guys. I really, really, really hate having just name because oftentimes programs will have you'll have a student you have a class you have a dog and so the idea of name isn't that descriptive now the reason i'm finding it acceptable in this situation is because it is specific to student creator but again what if a student carries notebooks and the notebook has a name or something like this i really struggle with this type of generic naming as i'm not sure i would call that best practice However, in this example, for this circumstance, we'll leave it alone. All right. Now we need to grab the double. So, or the number they enter. To the string. Bah. GPA seems right. Okay. 
that's looking good. And now we need to create the student. And so we're going to go ahead and instantiate a student from the student class. So student, what do we want to call our student? I'll just do student lowercase or happy student. You can also just do lowercase. I'm just being weird, which is fine. It makes coding better. I don't care what you said. New student name and then comma GPA. Happy student though isn't as descriptive. Um, it should be descriptive. New student seems redundant. Ah, I'll leave it alone. All right, new student. And then we can finally close this out. So let's close our input. Okay, and that's looking all right. It's looking pretty clean to me. Let's head back over here. Oh, and they already called it for, oh, they want us to name an input apparently. Fine. All right, let's give this a shot. See if we broke something. Enter my name, Kaiser. My GPA, uh, 4 uh, maybe not totally true all the time. Anyways, Kaiser with 4 bro. Ba -ba -da! Cool. All right, let's go ahead and test. No test found. G works for me. Hey, this is, we're no longer doing simple things. I hope you're proud of yourself and what we can create, and I'm really excited to keep building. Onward. Um,